watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. Fairfax County Police investigating the deadly shooting in Bailey's Crossroads. A man was taken to the hospital where he later died. It happened just after 3 this morning on Argyle Drive in Alexandria. Police believe the victim and the shooter knew each other. All right, meteorologist Damon Matson joined us with the latest check in the forecast. Damon, yesterday, sunny, beautiful day. Today, the clouds are back. We know what that means. Mother Nature is playing with our emotions, Mark. Come on. We want to see that sunshine more often, but it's just not the way it has been going throughout this entire week. And indeed, those clouds, they are back. They rolled in last night and early this morning, and we have an overcast sky across the entire DMV now as we go into the afternoon. And this cloud cover is not going to be breaking up as we go throughout the rest of the day and the next storm system arrives from the west. Speaking of, look at that on the horizon back across far western Maryland, West Virginia, rain is building in and we are expecting soggy conditions to take hold along and west of the I-81 corridor over the next couple of hours. All of the activity that is over West Virginia, Western Pennsylvania right now, that is going to be moving in. Now, as we go off to the east toward DC, the I-95 corridor, rain is not going to begin that quickly. We actually are going to get plenty of dry time as we go through the afternoon and on into the start of the evening. So western locations, you're going to see that soggy weather first and pretty shortly here. But again, rain not expected to start up anytime soon near DC. So when should we expect the soggy weather to get going around the metro area? And is the rain going to linger into the weekend. We'll have a full look at that forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. As Park Police work with fire crews from Montgomery and Fairfax counties to rescue a pair of kayakers. Officials say the two were on the Potomac River in Great Falls Park yesterday when they went over Maryland Falls. Both kayakers fell into the water. Officials say that a Park Police helicopter scooped up one of them in the rescue basket and they were flown to a trauma center. Officials say that they suffered serious injuries. The other kayaker was able to get out of the water before rescue crews arrived and they were treated on scene and released. Well, developing now in the district, crime numbers are down despite neighbors saying that they're more afraid of crime than ever. Let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, they show that compared to last year at this time, violent crime is down by nearly 30%. The number of murders and assaults with a dangerous weapon also down. Even carjackings are down 21%, but still a number more than 2,000. Now, in the district, city leaders pushing back against the federal bill, they say is an outrageous overstep. D.C. Crimes Act passed in the House on Wednesday. The bill limits the district's ability to change sentencing laws, among other things. D.C. News Now's Mario Carbone takes a closer look. It is an outrageous overstep. For D.C. Council member Brooke Pinto, the latest public safety measure passed by the U.S. House and aimed at regulating D.C. is hypocritical. It would really hamper our ability to protect the residents of the District of Columbia. The progressive policies of the District of Columbia City Council are simply not working. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds is behind the D.C. Crimes Act or the D.C. Criminal Reforms to Immediately Make Everyone Safe Act of 2024. The bill is passed without objection. If enacted, the law would modify D.C.'s 1985 Youth Rehabilitation Act, which allows judges to grant more lenient sentences to those under the age of 25, lowering the age to 18, and prohibit D.C. Council from making changes to existing sentencing laws. That is their big tough on crime package they offer the Congress. No increases in criminal sentences indefinitely in the District of Columbia. Does this act make D.C. safer? No. Liz Comer with the Sentencing Project says if passed and enacted, the bill will increase racial disparities. Uh, sometimes prison isn't the answer. Community supervision is. Comer and others calling it the biggest rollback of home rule in a generation. Uh, Congress at the moment struggles to change the name of a post office. It can't be trusted to handle all of the legislative needs for D.C. sentencing laws. This is my my colleague's job. Our thanks to Mary R. Carbone. Next, this will go to a Senate committee and council member Brick P Brooke Pinto, you heard from just a short time ago, says that she and others will work to make sure that the bill does not make it out of committee 
enter a full vote. Well, DC News Now is your local election headquarters. In the race for Senate, former Governor Larry Hogan announcing his support for abortion rights into federal law yesterday. And that's according to the New York Times. Well, the Times says that he described himself as, quote, pro-choice. And the former Maryland governor also announced his support for adding abortion rights to the state constitution. That will be a ballot measure this November. It's a large policy, policy shift ahead of the general election. Former governor says, that, quote, I'll continue to protect the rights of women to make their own reproductive choices in the Senate by supporting a bipartisan compromise to restore Roe, v Roe as the law of the land. As Governor Hogan vetoed a state law expanding abortion access in Maryland. Democrats are looking to criticize Republicans' abortion rights records ahead of as November as they hope to retain control of the U.S. Senate. Well, in Virginia, 11 Democrats vying for an open congressional seat. The group attended a candidate forum hosted by the NAACP in Leesburg yesterday, and they discussed a number of things, including gun violence, reproductive rights, and housing. Despite different perspectives, the candidates agreed on solutions to several topics, except for the Israel-Hamas war. We spoke to the panel's moderator, who says the forum was necessary for voters. I wanted the um, audience to take a second look at candidates, to make sure that we're not just giving away our vote blindly. Uh, the Virginia primary election is next month. A close call in Fairfax, Virginia. A new body camera video shows a police officer about to get out of their car on the highway when another car hit the door. Take a look. Well, there goes that. Fairfax police say the driver responsible was using her phone just before this happened. Luckily, no one was injured in the crash, but it serves as a reminder to put your phones away while driving. Turning out of Prince George's County, the police department is working toward transitioning to a 12-hour shift, and they say that this comes as they experience issues with the recruiting and retaining police officers. In a statement to DC News Now, the department says the longer shifts will help consolidate resources and increase overall staffing. And they say that it will help decrease response times and, quote, provide officers additional time to address community issues such as traffic complaints, violent crime, and property crime. All right, it is official. We're only 112 days away from the NFL kicking off the new season. And with schedules released this week, there's a lot of excitement, but also a lot of frustration around what it will cost to watch the games. Now, if you want to watch every game this coming season, you're going to have to do so on seven different streaming networks. The total dollar amount needed to watch every NFL game may surprise you. You'll need a cable or a YouTube TV subscription, plus the extra service. An NFL Sunday ticket that's already more than $1,200 for the season. And you can add in Amazon Prime Video for Thursday night games. That's $139. Peacock, ESPN, and the NFL Network, that tax on another $199. And now Netflix for Christmas Day, that's nearly a whopping $1,600 annually uh, to watch football. But there are some ways that you can knock down the price, free trials or short-term signups. And don't be shy about sharing logins with friends and families and then splitting the cost. Now, YouTube, TV, Amazon Prime also allow family sharing. And you can also try to cancel subscriptions and then re-sign up when deals are offered. Well, a new food hall will have its grand opening in, in downtown Silver Spring today. DC News Now's Kevon Dupree shows us what customers can expect when they visit this new location. Solaire Social is not only a new food hall here in downtown Silver Spring, it's Silver Spring's first food hall, and it's offering nine diverse dining options for customers to choose from. Solaire Social CEO Akhtar Nawab says Silver Spring's newest dining space has been more than three years in the making. It started, you know, before the pandemic and then it lasted, you know, we took a pause during the pandemic and during that time period, you know, we had to reevaluate a lot of tenants fell out, but we also found a lot of new tenants and that's who you see here today. One of those tenants is kebab to go. We will be offering Mediterranean cuisine especially Lebanese cuisine. We will have shawarma, chicken shawarma, meat shawarma, and then 
all the kebabs like lamb kebab, chicken kebab, beef kebab. One offering diners will be able to try is Fire Pit Brazilian Barbecue, a new concept that cooks its food in a traditional way. Real Brazilian barbecue got to be with charcoal. You know, we have to see some, some real smoke coming up, you know, firewood and charcoal. Sofia Twanchi started her business with her husband, and she says they're most excited about sharing part of their culture with others. We're going to sell um, um, Burmese, uh, Burmese food and like kind of a combination and the Thai, also um, the Korean. Developers say they carefully selected each vendor for this space, so there's something for everyone. It's welcoming. It feels, you know, all these open windows already bring a lot to it. You know, having the setting so close to D.C. and having its own identity here, I think it's going to bring a lot of folks together. Solaire Social's grand opening will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. Reporting in Silver Spring, I'm Kevon Dupree, D.C. News Now.